The DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Fresh Your Toe. Good evening. This is Francho Tone. Tonight, Cavalcade tells the story of Benjamin Silliman, whose life and work at Yale College may be said to have ushered in scientific education in America. He foresaw the benefits that science would bring to this country. Now, the enlightened professor... An original radio play starring Francho Tone as Benjamin Silliman on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Our story starts in 1801. President of Yale College, Timothy Dwight, has just made a startling proposal to some of his colleagues. President Dwight... Surely you must agree that the introduction of so so worldly a subject as chemistry to the academic halls of Yale College is, to say the least, astonishing. It is. Yes, 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 Professor, it is astonishing. I'm astonished we did not introduce science to our curriculum much sooner. Uh, President Dwight, sir, it is with considerable reason that Yale College has been called the School of Plato. Our candidates for admission are examined in Cicero's orations and Virgil. The four Gospels, the Greek Testament, precisely. Must we now require our young men to show us a pair of hands dirty in some alchemist's laboratory? Uh, Gentlemen, I am not proposing the study of medieval alchemy. I am proposing the scientific and intellectual discipline of chemistry. There is a difference. Yes, but shall we not be making infidels of our students? Benjamin Silliman, whom I propose we appoint as our first professor of chemistry, though a young man of 22... Is a man of deep religious devotion. Oh, I, yes, of course. I knew Benjamin Silliman's father, the late General Silliman. Served under General Washington together, we did, during the Revolution. Fine man, fine family. Quite so. Gentlemen, with your permission, may I ask young Mr. Silliman to join us so that you can question him yourself? <laughs> Yes, sir, I do believe that science should take its place beside religion and the classics in our curriculum. But, Mr. Silliman, you have been trained as an attorney. Why are you so ready to lead the profession of law? Well, sir, the legal profession is not only filled, but crowded with many brilliant men. True, true. But science is an open field. The United States is a young country with enormous undeveloped resources. And a young man's only boundary is the horizon of his own imagination. And furthermore... Oh, ben, a little slower, Ben. Oh, I'm sorry, gentlemen. When I'm enthusiastic about something, I do go too fast. <laughs> You'll have to watch that enthusiastic tempo in the classroom, Mr. Silliman. Uh, Mr. Silliman, if we should appoint you teaching chemistry at the next college term? No, sir. Huh? I know nothing about chemistry, sir. Nothing uh, about chemistry? But I can learn. I can get instruction. Instruction in chemistry is rare in this country, Mr. Silliman. Where do you think you will find it? At the College of New Jersey in Princeton, sir. Or at Harvard College. Yes, mm-hmm. I understand for some years now, both these institutions have offered a course in chemistry. Princeton and Harvard, eh? I believe we are quite prepared to take a vote, President Dwight. With your permission, gentlemen, I will leave now. Oh, wait a moment, Ben. Those in favor of establishing a professorship of chemistry here at Yale, please answer aye. 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 Opposed? Ben Silliman, you are the first professor of chemistry at Yale College. pack every one of your law books today. Yes, Jimmy, today. I'm finished with law, and I'm finished with law business. So hand me that nail, will you? Are you crazy? The sign painter could hang up your shingle tomorrow. Benjamin Silliman, attorney at law. If you will be so kind to the nail. Ben, wait a minute. Now, listen. You've graduated from Yale. You've just passed the Connecticut examination for the bar, and now you're leaving the law to teach. Yes, Jimmy, to teach. But I've thought it through. I've made up my mind, and now... Well, I've crossed the Rubicon. There's no turning back. The Rubicon? Will you be teaching Latin instead of Greek? No, neither Greek nor Latin. But what else is there to teach at Yale? We have something new in mind, the teaching of science. Science? Yes, Jimmy. Chemistry and natural history. Look, Jim, all my life I've been searching for some... some calling. And I'm sure teaching is it for me. But but chemistry, you you know nothing about chemistry. I'm on my way down to John McLean at Princeton to learn. Well, now, may the witness for the defense step down to procure a nail... All right, here's your nail. <laughs> if you ask me, it's for your own cost. So, 
You see, Ben, if you allow the gas to bubble through water, you can collect it. Yes. Yes, I see, Professor McLean, but what is the gas you're making here? You get it best by the application of heat to the oxymuriate of potassium. This gas is called oxygen. There, we've collected sufficient. Now, watch me closely, laddie, while I hold a lighted candle to this jar of oxygen. There. How's that? <laughs> That's quite a flame. <laughs> That's your lesson for today, Ben. Oxygen feeds the very fire of life itself. You breathe it in with every wee breath you take. <laughs> the teaching of chemistry at Yale College will need all the fire I have. <laughs> education, Ben. Education and patience. You must teach the men around you that you're not a medieval alchemist puttering in a dark cellar with iron pots and working spells of magic to turn lead into gold. Well, there'll be no iron pots and dark cellars for me. Yale's building me a new laboratory. If you'll follow me this way, Mr. Silliman, I'll show you to your laboratory. Oh, is my room in the back of the building? Back of the building. <laughs> no, sir. Your laboratory is down in there. Down there? Well, in the cellar? Oh, we built you a fine new ladder to climb down, sir, and there'll be two or three small windows. Two or three we... small windows? Well, you'll not be wanting too many windows, sir, what with your explosions and all. You'd best close that trap door. I've seen enough. I'm sorry, sir. Very sorry. But don't you worry about it. It's not your fault. I'm going to the president's office. <laughs> President Dwight, I'm willing to put up with anything to give science a foothold here at Yale. But this is hardly a foothold even. It's a grave. Now, Ben, the architect said he had seen no proper laboratory in this country which he could copy. And he was worried about explosions and all. The architect only shares the prevailing childish notion that chemistry is the science of loud noises. Well, Ben, you've made the issue itself explosive now. As it should be. The issue is bigger than I am or my laboratory. It's whether or not the inquiring intelligence of man in the newest country of the new world is now to be blunted before it has a chance to prove itself. All right, Ben, all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll invite the members of the corporation to visit your laboratory and we'll see what they'll do about it. <laughs> Mr. Silliman, I believe you know the Reverend Dr. Ely and the Honorable James Hillhouse. How do you do? Gentlemen? All right, Silliman, let's have a look at your laboratory. Where's the door? Well, you're, you're standing on it, sir. I beg your pardon? The door to my laboratory is a trap door. If you'll step to one side, sir. Oh. Will you go first, Mr. Hillhouse? I'll go where? I don't see anything down there. Well, if you feel around, you'll find a ladder. Huh. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hand. There, sir. There are 16 rungs. If you'll count them, you'll know when you've reached the bottom. One, two, three... Dr. Ely, will you go next? Uh, after you, Dwight. No, after you, sir. All right. Remember to count, sir. One, two, three... Well, Ben, I think two. you're making your point. Are you coming down, Dwight? I'm on my way. If you all stand still down there, you won't fall and bump into one another. Coming back? Yes, right after you. Silliman, are you playing a joke? Where are we? I can barely see down here. Well, you're 16 feet down in the earth. Yes, 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 I know. Well, what is this miserable hole? This miserable hole, gentlemen, is my laboratory. Good morning. May I come in, sir? Yes, yes, Ben, come in. Ah, oh, Professor Silliman, you are a frequent visitor at the president's office. Yes, I imagine I'm becoming somewhat of a nuisance. But it's your fault, sir. You made me professor of chemistry. Yes, I know. I'm sorry about your laboratory. I wish we could do more to improve it. Well, that's all right, sir. The windows do help a little, but now it's a matter of equipment for the laboratory and books for my courses. Yes? Sir, there's equipment which can be gotten only in Europe. So you propose we send to Europe for these supplies? I propose you send me to Europe for these supplies. What? Uh... Well, Ben, you've gotten everything you've wanted so far. I imagine the corporation will grant you this. I might just as well say here and now, bon voyage. Professor Silliman, perhaps I could include in the equipment that I'm sending back to America for you one of these marvelous gas lamps. Well, I must admit, Mr. Cavendish, that the most impressive sightseeing is house lighted by gas, but 
I doubt if it will ever be used generally for illumination. My dear Silliman, within a short time, we hope to have all London illuminated by gas. Well, I'd have grave doubts as to the success of any such scheme, Mr. Carey. Uh, it is not for a scientist to doubt, sir. You must have vision, scientific foresight. Well, perhaps I may pick up the apparatus on my return to England. You know, I'm crossing to Rotterdam tomorrow morning. Rotterdam? Would you dare cross the channel now? Napoleon's army is standing on the shore of the continent, ready to wade across the channel and invade England. It's war, you know. Well, I must get more scientific books and journals in Rotterdam. As an American, Mr. Cavendish, I hope I'll be considered a neutral. Is uh, this the bookshop of Wiener van Spahn? Ah, so you must be the American who wrote to me. Professor um, uh, uh, Schillimann, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I got your letter. I have all your books ready for you, Minher. Oh, be careful what you say now, Minher. The man who just came in is a secret agent of Napoleon. Not very secret. I've been seeing him around me all morning. Oh, <laughs> he pretends to look at the bookshelf there. <laughs> Anyone just over from England is suspected here, so... So be very careful how you speak, especially if you're on your way to France. Well, I, I never thought I'd converse in the classical Latin they taught me at Yale, but... Calidiores uh, quam hic. Nihil detestabilis de decore, nil fedio servitute. Cum avobis discessero libenter haec, cum Yale College disputare. Vale, vale, Professor Silliman, vale, Domine. Salutem sepiterna antidi, Domine. And good luck. And good luck to you, in here on your trip to France. <laughs> I regret to inform you, monsieur, that it will be impossible for you to enter France. You cannot cross the border. But I must, I tell you. We have reports from our agents. In Holland, you saw a ship that the Dutch are building for our French Navy. Yes, that's right. And you were so unwise as to say that it was useless to build it since the moment it was sent to sea, the English would capture it. Well, that's the truth, sir. One does not speak such truth in Napoleon's France. In America, sir, we say whatever we please. To whomever we please. Then, monsieur, I suggest that you return to America. You are listening to The Enlightened Professor, starring Francho Tone as Benjamin Silliman on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Professor Silliman took the French official's advice and did return to America, but not until he had studied geology at the University of Edinburgh. When he returned to Yale, he persuaded the college to start an elective course in geology and also began giving lectures to a small, invited audience of men and women of New Haven. I think, ladies and gentlemen, I'd better close this lecture on geology for this evening. After all, it took our creator six days to make this earth we're studying. I mustn't try to unveil all its mysteries for you in one evening. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Silliman. Oh. oh, yes, Miss Trumbull. I want to thank you for inviting me to these lectures you're giving here in your laboratory. Well, it's an honor to have the daughter of the governor of Connecticut attend. Oh, my father told me I'd be most impressed. Oh, yes. Geology can be most impressive. <sighs> you're a modest professor. Modest? Oh, oh, you meant... Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I did miss a few words now and then when someone coughed. I was not aware of any coughing. Well... Oh, you're trying to tell me that I talk too fast, aren't you? Thanks for your criticism. Oh, not criticism, sir. But you're quite right. It's my besetting fault. I do run on. It's just that you're so enthusiastic about what you're saying. Well, do you... Do you share my enthusiasm for geology, Miss Trumbull? If I knew more about it, I'm sure I would. Perhaps it might mean more to you if you made some field trips, got out among the rocks, and saw the wonders of geology for yourself. Mm, it might be considered unladylike. Oh, oh, oh. come now, Miss Trumbull. This is not the Middle Ages. This is 188. How would you like... How would you like to accompany me on one of my jaunts out to West Rock? Oh, are you sure I wouldn't be in the way? Quite sure, Miss Trumbull. I'll put up a picnic lunch. Will... Will this Sunday be agreeable? Why, Yes. For how many shall I plan lunch, then? Oh, just two. Uh, I... 
I think that since you're new to the subject, I better give you my undivided attention. Ben, Ben, look under your foot there. What? Isn't it a nugget of gold? Oh, let's see. Gold in New Haven. There now, after four months of making these jaunts with you, I've discovered something. <laughs> Harriet, this looks like gold, but it isn't. It's called fool's gold. Oh, I thought I was being so bright. You've been a very apt pupil, Harriet. <laughs> Nonsense. You know I don't know any more about geology today than I did the first Sunday. <laughs> did you ever think I'd make a regular thing of coming on these trips with you? Well, I, I rather hoped you would. That's the very nicest thing you've ever said to me, Ben. It's been fun watching you work. You're going to be a great man, Ben Silliman. A great scientist. No, Harriet. I'll never make the great discoveries. Mine's a humble task. Teaching what other men discover. Making their discoveries known so that they may be used. You're modest, Ben. No, just honest. Honest and poor. Look. Look at this. What's it look like? What do you mean? It looks as much like diamond as your piece of stone looked like gold. But it's quartz. That's very pretty. Well, with what I earn, I'm afraid all my wife will get for an engagement ring will be fool's gold and quartz. Oh, Ben. And lots of hard work, too. She'll have to help me read proof for my books, criticize my lectures. And keep you from talking too fast. <laughs> yes. But I'm not talking too fast now, am I? No. You're not, Ben. Harriet, would you... Well, would you be happy with... Fool's gold... And court? Yes. I wouldn't dream of having anything else. Oh, Harriet, darling. Gentlemen, your, your assignment for the next week will be to study the subject of coal. Now, remember, we are after scientific precision in this course. Sir? Yes, Mr. Thurston? May I ask, sir... Why are we studying coal? Everybody knows what coal can do. Oh. Oh. If the enthusiastic barking in the rear seats will stop for a moment. Thank you. I will say that I agree with Mr. Thurston's question. An open mind, a scientific attitude, requires questioning. Mr. Thurston. Yes, sir? You are familiar, no doubt, with the fairly recent invention of the steam engine by Watts in England. Yes, sir. And the more recent invention of the steamboat by Robert Fulton in America. Yes, Professor. This is a young country, Mr. Thurston, a big country, and it's growing. Yes, sir, I, I know that. That means transportation, right? Yes, sir. Your life and my life will change as a result. But I have here a letter from a large mining company. They want practical answers to practical questions about coal. The same sort of questions I want you to ask yourselves. But, but, sir, what practical answer is there to a subject we know so little about? Gentlemen, these are not the idle questions of an ivory tower college classroom. They add up to the dollars and cents which keep our commercial bloodstream alive and flowing. It's our obligation to investigate. Does, does that answer your question, Mr. Thurston? Yes, sir. It certainly does. Very well. Class dismissed. <laughs> Harriet? Of course. What other woman but your wife would come to this dreadful laboratory of yours? <laughs> Here, give me your hand. Careful. Well, now, to what do I owe the honor of this visit? Oh, well, I was out for the air. You came to the wrong place to get it. But it's good to see you. Oh, Ben, it's after eight and you're still working in the laboratory. I got worried when you didn't come home for well, supper. The traditionally absent-minded professor, I'm afraid. I have got involved in preparing this fulminating soap. Well, I brought you some food, and if you'll just take the time to sit down and eat in it. In a minute, in a minute. I just want to add something here and stir it a bit, and it'll be ready. How did the lecture on coal go this morning? I think I talked a little more slowly. <laughs> You'd better just stand a little bit away from this, Harriet. Well, Ben, it's not dangerous, is it? It might boil up a bit if I haven't got... To... <laughs> ben, your face! Quick, Harriet, water Water for my eyes. Here. Your eyes, Ben? Yes, I, I can't see, Harriet. I can't see. I've brought another cold compress for you, Ben. Thank you, Harriet. 
Are you feeling a little better now? Oh, yes. You know, the first three weeks were bad, but the pain was going. I, I miss my eyesight. I mean, for someone who's always read so much, it's hard to lie down in darkness. Oh, Harry, you mustn't cry. I keep blaming myself for coming to your laboratory. Oh, Harriet, there's no blame on you, or me, or anyone. Everybody in all kinds of work has accidents. But if I hadn't... No, you should... I should blame my own carelessness, first of all. What did Dr. Ives say when you went downstairs with him? He, he said to keep the room dark. Only one small candle for light. Yes, of course, dear, but what did he say? I want you to tell me. He said he never had a case of explosion blindness like this. They're very rare. He didn't say that I'd be able to see again? No. No, he, he didn't. Oh, Harriet, dear, please. Somehow we'll go on. There's still so much work for me to do, so much to learn, so much to teach. God cannot have meant for me to cease my labors here. He'll give me back my sight. And if he should not, somehow we must still go on. But God did see fit to give Ben Silliman back his eyesight. After two months of blindness, he recovered his sight and did go on to help start the Yale Medical School, to found and edit, single-handed, the great American Journal of Science, and finally to start the graduate science courses which originated the whole idea of postgraduate education in this country and eventually led at Yale to the founding of the Sheffield Scientific School, That's the story of the enlightened professor, Benjamin Silliman, whose influence was second to none in the early development of science in this country. sure our radio listeners join the audience in the theater tonight applauding the performance of Fran Chopin and the others in tonight's cast on the Cavalcade of America. Next week, Cavalcade presents two distinguished stars, Louis Calhoun and MacDonald Carey, in a deeply moving story called Who Walk Alone? The drama of a great American soldier, General Leonard Wood, and a young private, and their fight against leprosy. We hope you'll join us. Tonight's DuPont Cavalcade, The Enlightened Professor, was written by Robert Anderson and Bernard Dreyer and was based on the biography Benjamin Silliman, Pathfinder in American Science by John F. Fulton and Elizabeth Thompson, currently published by Henry Schumann. Our star, Francho Tone, can soon be seen starring in Jigsaw, a Tower Pictures production. The music on tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. This is Deb Pearson inviting you to listen next week to Who Walk Alone, co-starring Louis Calhoun and MacDonald Carey. And in weeks to come, be sure to listen to Cavalcade's stories starring other distinguished Hollywood personalities such as Ray Milland and William Powell. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.